some open land. Once we uh, loaded the wagon, O'Neill would pull and I would push it home. O'Neill was very courageous. I never saw him back down from a challenge. He was also very fair-minded. He was very fair in his dealings and expected to receive the same treatment in return. It didn't matter if you were black or white. O'Neill expected you to be fair with him. I remember O'Neill getting into a dispute with his employer's son-in-law. He was about 18 at the time. The son-in-law operated the bulldozers that pushed the stumps out of the ground. O'Neill was in the process of climbing up on the bulldozer when Vic, his son, son-in-law, um, the son-in-law of the operator, was the operator, drove away. Of course, O'Neill jumped from the bulldozer. This is just one example of O'Neill's courage and aggressiveness. In February 1965, I rode the Greyhound bus from Riverside to Poplarville, Mississippi to visit my parents and relatives. While I was there, I spent some time with O'Neill and his family in Barnardale, Louisiana. O'Neill and uh, Creed Rogers, both fly, have recently been appointed deputy sheriffs in Louisiana. They were the first blacks to be appointed in Louisiana, at least as far as I'm aware. While I sat in the living room chatting with O'Neill and his wife, Mabella, I began kidding O'Neill about his position of deputy sheriff. I said, a deputy sheriff, man? Show me your tin badge. O'Neill got up and left the room. In a short while, he came back fully dressed in his uniform. He pointed to his badge and said, this ain't no tin badge. <laughs> I knew then that he was extremely proud of his appointment and didn't want to hear any nonsense. That night I, I tagged along with O'Neill and Creed and experienced the potential danger they faced while patrolling their beat. On a moonless night in the tiny woods of Louisiana, it is so dark you can only see a few feet in front of you. They could have easily been ambushed. They were, in fact, ambushed very close to O'Neill's home less than a mile in June 1965. About four months after I returned home to Riverside, I didn't get to see O'Neill before I left that, left for California because he was away up into Bella House in Bogos, Louisiana. When I, left. I was in bed after a difficult delivery day at the post office. When the phone rang, it was Marilyn Moore, my sister in law, notifying me that O'Neill had been killed by so called night riders of uh, the KKK and his partner, Creed Rogers, seriously wounded. Nothing has ever made me as angry as O'Neill's death. However, I cannot say I was surprised. To this day, no one has been brought to justice for the murder of my brother O'Neill, and the sheriff's department never made any effort to find the people involved in bringing them to trial. This proved to me that the uh, white deputies in the sheriff's department didn't support O'Neill in three. They had only appointed O'Neill and Creed to make a show of equality, but they gave them no support. It was years before I was able to get rid of my anger and bitterness. I read all kinds of things, magazines, books, and stories, to try to make sense of my brother's murder. Gradually it dawned on me that he had helped open doors to African American. Change I learned does not come without sacrifice. I learned about many others who lost their lives during the civil rights movement, both black and white. Many years after his death, Nelson Mandela, and I just told you about that, took long walks of 